Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to share with you my mother's version of a pizza rustica. Now, let me take you back a few years. A few years ago, I shared with you a pizza rustica recipe that has been in my family for years, and it's ricotta based, and it is my nonna's recipe. My mother makes her slightly different using an egg base. Now, I mentioned it a while back in my vlog, my vlog channel, but you should follow me there if you don't, you should. Um, and I had so many people ask if I could share my mother's version because it is something that I think um, we shared on our Italy vlogs and you saw her, you know, her version of it. And uh, it is different than my nonna's. My nonna's makes it with ricotta, my mom makes it with eggs. It's delicious either way. And since Easter is kind of coming up, I figured it would be perfect time to share it with you because this is something she makes at Easter time every single year. So the ingredients you'll need are very basic. If you are in an Italian household, you probably have them on hand. Start off with some eggs. You need about a dozen eggs. I've got some salami and prosciutto that I've chopped. Lots of provolone cheese. I've got parmigiano reggiano, a little olive oil, and some pizza dough. Now I already have some pizza dough pre-made. You need two one pound balls of pizza dough. And if you go to my website at laraindiankitchen.com and you just go into my homemade pizza video, the recipe for the pizza dough makes two one pound balls of pizza dough, which is perfect. But you can also go to your local grocery store and buy pizza dough, or you can go to your pizza, local pizza shop and buy pizza dough from there. It's whatever you prefer. Now I've got my oven preheated to 400. I have a 12 inch round pan. This is from Italy, which gives, this makes for like the best crust ever. Um, I have this oiled. I'm going to set that aside. Now I want to work with one piece of pizza dough at a time. Actually, let me set that aside for a second so that I can start whisking my eggs. Now I'm going to make this like my mother does by just using a fork to mix everything together because that's just what I've seen her do my whole entire life. You don't need to add any salt to this because you're adding a lot of cheeses and a lot of meat, so it's going to be really salty already, so you don't need to add any additional salt. So all I'm going to do is whisk the eggs until they're really well combined. You want to make sure that they're well whisked, and then we'll stir in everything else. Okay, now I'm going to add all of my cheeses and look at the parmigiano, freshly grated, of course. All oh, my lovely meats. This is so good. It's such a, this is why I've always had such a love affair with food because it just instantly transports you somewhere else. So now all I'm going to do is give this a really good stir. I want to mix everything together well. Okay, this is done. I also wanted to show you that I did switch pan, the same exact pan, it's just like an inch smaller because it, it makes for a puffier, more of a stuffed pizza. It's not as thin, I make it a little bit thicker. I like a lot of thickness on my pizza, stuffed pizzas because that's just how I roll. So that's why I chose a slightly different pan. But my mother would use a, a, a slightly bigger one. Okay, I'm going to take each piece of pizza dough and I need to roll this out so that it fits really well into my pan and it comes up the sides a little bit. Ordinarily, you know I would do this by hand, but I don't want to border here. I want everything to be about the same thickness, and you also want to make sure that you um, keep it moving because you don't want it to stick to the table, to my counter, but I also don't want to add a lot of flour because that will, it, it'll, it will ruin the texture of the pizza crust. So I want it to be really crispy, and I want it to be kind of like doughy and floury. So just keep it moving around, flip it upside down, do what you have to do. Use your hands if you need to for a little bit, just like that, just to kind of give it a go. Stretch it, and then you can keep just moving it around with the, stretching it around and rolling it out with the rolling pin if you need to. Get your pizza dough, line it in there. Don't worry if it's not perfect because we are gonna maneuver things around in just a little bit. Just leave it here just to hang out for a few minutes because I want to roll out the other one. So do, do the exact same thing. You want to roll it out to about the same size because you need to cover the top really well. And uh, just keep moving it and rolling it and shaking off excess flour. You kind of want to just dust your board just so that it doesn't stick, but also just shake it off as you go. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing. Okay, just stretching this out to fit really well. I don't want any bubbles at the bottom. Add your filling. Oh, this is so amazing. 
I'm excited about it like you would not believe. And this is definitely not something you eat every day or every week, even every month. This is something we eat around Easter, usually always, um, is when we have this pizza. But it is a real treat, I have to say. And then I just like to brush a little bit of oil on the sides so that it helps the second piece kind of stick on. Put that on like so. Don't worry if that that happens, it's no big deal. Cut off the excess. You don't need all that extra, but you don't want to throw this away. Make yourself some garlic knots, make yourself whatever your heart desires. It is way too precious to be thrown out. I'm gonna go with garlic knots, because that's usually what I do when there's leftover pieces of dough like this, because it's perfect, because all I do is roll it around my fingers and it's good to go. Okay, then just kind of like pinch the sides like so and then just tuck them in and if the egg a little bit of the egg goes overboard don't worry about it it works out in the end you shall see my friend okay almost done make a little slit at the top a little bit of oil and this is going to go into my oven preheated at three, um, 375, 400 for about 45 minutes or so, or until it's a beautiful golden brown color. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. My pizza baked for about 45 minutes, and the thing is, you need to make sure that it cools completely before you go ahead and cut it. In fact, the way I prefer eating it and the way we really eat it back home uh, in my mom's house, we. I love it when she makes it the night before and puts it in the fridge overnight and then the next day it's cold. It just makes for the best like snack or light lunch. It's just the best. That's how I grew up eating it. So that's just how I prefer it. But you do have to make sure it's pretty cold before you go ahead and get it out of the pan. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, I love it. Look how nice and thick and gorgeous. Okay, let's give this a little slice. You can see it's lovely and puffed up and a little goes a long way. I mean, this could feed, this could, you know, we could get 12 slices out of this and feed people happily because it's very, very, very rich. Look at it. That is what I'm talking about. That is my mama's pizza rustica. And that's just, I don't know, it's, there's such nostalgia with food, isn't there? I mean, you just... The smell instantly think, makes me think of her. And this, in fact, not only makes me think of my mother, but it makes me think of my maternal grandmother that passed years ago. And um, it, I was about, I would say, seven or eight. And she would make pies like this, or she would make um, cato, which is um, kind of like a baked mashed potato with stuff in it and breadcrumbs on top. And this, it just reminds me a lot of her, my mother's side of the family. Okay gonna give us a bite. I did kind of cut into it. You can see what it looks like. I did <laughs> destroy it a little bit, so don't mind. Mm. I tell you, my mommy would be very proud. And this tomorrow for lunch is gonna be like lunch of champions. Mm. If I close my eyes, I'll the picture myself on her balcony with a slice of this in my hand, no fork, no no um, plate, nothing. In my hand, it's kind of like an apple. Because <laughs> that's just how we roll back home. I hope that you enjoy spending time with me. I know so many of you were requesting this recipe and I hope that you make it, I hope that you enjoy it, and I hope that it becomes a part of your family um, family classics. Thank you so much for spending time with me. You know the recipe will be waiting for you all in the kitchen.com and I'll see you next time. Bye.